Hello everybody, uh, Happy New Year, and I hope you've all had a great break, lovely little holiday, and welcome back to my channel. So, on the bench today we have something that I've not had on my bench for quite a while, it's a little uh, tube amplifying system. Now, this I found on AliExpress, pretty cheap. Uh, the way it is, it's a based on a 6K4 tube system and it's quite easy to see on Express. I'm going to show you now. I'm not going to go over it too much in detail on here. You can always take a peek at the link. I could always stick a link in the uh, description. I think I will. And you can see there, look, you get free shipping and all sorts. Now, it says here that um, the power is 12 to 16 volt and it's DC. I was actually looking for one um, which was going to be the same as a uh, YouTube friend Sonic Ox, which is a 12 volt AC system. I got the wrong one, but I'm quite happy with what I got here. And so let's just put that back now. <laughs> one of the things to be noted about this is it comes with this acrylic case. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't know if it came with a case or not, but there's a very good reason why it does. And the reason is this, is that when you're putting 16 volts into this, you're getting round about 135 volts from these two points in here. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And so if you were to have this without the case on top and bottom, and you had the power in and you were just playing with it in your hands, you get yourself quite a serious belt off this. So there's a very good reason why they have put that case there. Um, what can I say about it? It's, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I did take the liberty of upgrading these tubes to the GE 5654s, uh, 5654Ws. There's a noticeable difference and I do prefer these to be in. But first of all, we're going to have a little peek at it with the way it is. Now, let me just move that if I can. Uh, so I've got my probe set up here to a couple of 1K resistors coming out of each channel. And one of the things to bear in mind with these is you want to make sure that you've got a clean supply for it, clean DC supply for this. And you also want to make sure that your audio player, remember, I learned this a long time ago, is you get in, you, if you put crap in, you get crap out. Right? So if your source isn't very good, uh, it's, that's, it's not going to help you at all. You're just going to amplify whatever noise and everything you get with your source. Use shielded cables because it's going to pick up noise. This is, this is a class A system. And so it's basically just permanently on and open, waiting for signal to go in there and it do its thing. It's, um, it doesn't have like a small quiescent. It has basically just full on all the time. And if you do taps, you're going to we'll do a demonstration that you're going to get noises coming off these things. So let's have a little quick look at the, uh, we're not going to go over too much of the circuit. I'm just going to tell you how it gets there. It's got a DC to DC converter. I'll tell you how it gets to its uh, high voltage. DC to DC converter here, which is a step up or step down in this configuration. It's a step up converter. And there's an IRF640 there, which enables it to get to that final high voltage. Uh, like I say, which comes out here, that goes through the system. I think it's got about 70 volts per side. There's a little switch here. I'm not quite sure what it's for, but it does make a sort of difference. You really gotta listen for the difference on tone. It's and this thing is supposed to be a up plus. Here it's uh, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't actually do a gain gain. You can't really hear it, but in this side it says it's sort of like hi-fi. All right, so we'll just leave it there because that's that's what you want to hear anyway. Is the hi-fi sound? So what I'm going to do now before. Um, before we do anything else, is I'm just going to show you this voltage. So I've got my little AC meter here. And I'm going to plug this in. Now for this, I'm using battery. And hopefully you're going to be able to see what's going on over here on the battery. 
Um, there, we've got the timer in the middle there, so I can't see properly, but we'll put that like that. Okay, can you see that? Oh, so you can see there I've got 15 points of volts. Turn that around a bit better. 15.84 volts. And when I turn this on, we're going to be putting our voltage into here. So if I just move that up a little tiny bit, you see that's around the uh, millivolt range. Uh, let me just see. Put these on, but we don't want it to be completely in your way, do we? There we go. And I'm going to pop that down onto that pad, that down onto that pad. And I don't think we've got a, a range there. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? It's supposed to be DC. Yep, that's just me being a bit, being a bit daft, so we've got minus 200 millivolts. Let's get that down there. And click on down there. And there we go, we've got 133 volts. 132.9, 133 volts. The not it's minus, it's just that these probes are the wrong way around. So you've got to be very careful with one of these. And that's why I believe that you get the acrylic case with it because it's down for the safety. All right. And as you can see, actually, we can point out some good stuff here. As you can see, we have got over here 6.6 .6 watts, 6.7, 6.6 watts. So it sat there at 0.43.42 of an amp. Um, we need to keep that in mind. <laughs> Because when we change these over, which I'm going to do in a moment, I've got to, in order for me to set up for audio, we're going to have to do that last, or I'm going to have to do a little, right, we'll put the audio in here, and then carry on and do the test for just see how, what distortion we get and what we don't get. But just for now, just to, to keep this running the way it is, we're going to do those tests now because it's set up to do the tests. What I've got here is I've got one probe on me. Ooh. Pull that out there. I've got one probe here on one channel, we've got another probe here on, on the other channel, and we're going through we're going through our uh, analog discovery too. Because it does work quite well. In actual fact it works fantastically well, I really do like it. Um, we're gonna switch over to the uh, the screen again and we're gonna take a peek at what we got going on on there. All right, so at the moment it's doing nothing. Now I'm going to be feeding in the signal from my little music player here. Thank you very much, John, again, for supplying these, um, these particular soundtracks. And uh, actually, I think that's one I've done, 1K, 4.5, with a... Um, uh, and actually, I can have a little look at that and see if it's worth noticing it compared to John's. Now the nice thing about this is I can actually turn this up to full blast. As you're going to see me do, we're going to put it onto full blast and I'm just going to click on run over here and keep turning that up. Now you've got to remember that I haven't actually turned up the uh, thing yet, the actual preamp. So let's just leave that down there. That's going on a loop. Let's start turning it up on here and we can see what we got going on now let me just turn it all the way that's full on all right that is full on and as you can see it's still using the same amount of current because like i said it's permanently on i don't know if that's going to make any difference it being there doesn't seem to be so um it's not as low it's going to go up in power as we turn it on it's on full power all the time I don't know if you can see that because I can't see it on the screen because it's got my, the timer in the way. So let's have a look at what we've got going on here then. So here we have our, uh, this is our uh, fundamental that we're putting up and this is our uh, two kilohertz and this is the 1% distortion. Now as you can see, we don't have any clipping over here. If I just adjust this, to that, but you can see there's there's no real clipping. Um, 
But I might say there's a slight rounding off there. So let me just turn that off and just see if that makes any difference. Not really. But what you may be able to see is this. On the one side here, we got ACRMS. I'm going to put on full again. That is up on full. ACRMS of 394.75 millivolts. And on channel 2, we've got 415.32. Problem three one. Uh, one point one volts peak to peak. All right. So that's interesting enough. And if I just make this go a little bit more like this, you might be able to see there is a little bit of a difference here. As you can see, they're not quite on top of each other perfectly, which is fair enough. I mean, you're not going to get that absolutely perfect anyway. I wouldn't have thought. But the, the thing to see here is that we do have on our third harmonic is slightly lower than our 1%. So still not too bad. And if I just adjust the volume down a bit, see if we can take that down to, we will be taking out quite a bit of the input, but there's from about three quarters of the way down, there's not a lot of change on that and uh, what we can do now as well is just why we got that like that i'm going to adjust this into the top line it goes just underneath the bottom there i'm going to adjust this to let's say 500 like that because what we want to do now is just keep an eye on this this top line this bottom line so it's slightly over there slightly under on the yellow trace slightly under on the yellow trace slightly over on the blue trace and just exact on the blue trace what we're going to do is we're going to sw switch out and go for a um, and go for a um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to find it on here. We're going to do a 20 kilohertz to 20 hertz, uh, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz sweep. I'm just going to find it. There we go. We got 100, 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. So let's put that on. And what we're looking for is any real loss in amplitude why we're doing that and it doesn't seem to be it seems to be pretty good just before that gets too tight in there let's just bring that a bit bigger so we're still on the top line and just over on the bottom line everything seems to be staying pretty okay like that and in a second we're gonna go around Okay, there's not a great deal going on there. We're just going, we're going into about 13 kilohertz now. 14 kilohertz. We can see on the peak to peak here, we have actually dropped down very slightly on channel one. And that is on. That, oh, no, no, sorry. Ah, oh, it's because I adjusted it, so I should shut up and put it just back down to where it was. I'm keeping both on the, on the one there. But it doesn't seem to really a great deal of change, which is pretty good. That means it's got a nice constant all through the frequency range and it won't be going up and down the amplitude. There's definitely nothing untoward happening there. So, all right, what we're going to do then is we're going to leave that like that now. Let's just go back to this. I'm going to stop that and stop this and I'm going to change out these tubes. Now again, just take note here that we've got 6.5 watts uh, that we're using there in power and it's 0 0.42 milliamps uh, 0 0.420 430 sort of milliamps so we're going up to that half amp thing 15.69 volts all right so i'm going to turn this off i'm going to disconnect this i'm going to very carefully take these tubes out i'm just going to leave this running uh, in the background, so it's going to make no difference. There's no uh, amplification. I just don't want it to switch itself off because it gets a bit annoying when we're going to keep going through that. Uh, let's put that there. The tubes are quite warm, as you'd expect, because they need to be able to get hot enough. Ah. To send the free electrons up to the top plate. 
Yo, yowza, yowza. Yeah, to see, send the free electrons up to the top plate. I mean, it's got to get pretty hot to boil them off. That's where the interest in physics comes in, when you understand how these uh, thermionic systems work. It's very interesting. Very interesting. And, and the experiment that went behind it as well, which was then just ignored. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I don't know why I put that back there again, it doesn't really matter, I could leave it up actually. So let's plug back in again. I really do that just for the sake of safety. Um, well, we've got our input still going in and we're still on, we're still on 100% on the volume and that's still running. Um, we're going to put it to uh, 1% there. Uh, these ones are actually John's. Oh, I'm going to put it on John's. Oh no, I'll put it, let's put it back on mine and we'll look at John's in a minute, see if there's any difference. Just I did it on exactly the same thing but different sound cards and all that. So now we're going to turn this on. Um, one of the first things we're going to see, of course, it went up to 9 watts there as it's cold. But as this starts getting warmer, I'm hoping you can see that we've actually, we're have actually we not using as much power with this. We're not using as much power. So let's just give it a few seconds. I'll just get this set up over here. Start running this again. And... You can just put that there, just in that. We we'll just turn it off for the moment. All right, and I'm going to start turning this up. Uh, let's go up and up and up. We're still going now. Now we're about a little bit over what we were with the other tubes. Let's still carry on going up, 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 up. Still no clipping. And this time we're on two volts peak to peak on channel one and channel two. This time we have also got 0.7 volts, 0.72, 0.73 volts here. And if we look at this a bit more closely, we can see that these are pretty much on top of each other. Now these tubes claim to be matched and um, what they mean by matched is basically there'll be a whole batch of tubes and the bigger um, amount, sample amount of tubes you've got the better of course so you're using a special tube meter you can match up all the characteristics and ensure that when you send out a couple of tubes they're pretty much the same as each other and that, that means that you then end up getting this where they are both clearly um, very close to each other hardly anything uh, we're talking, um, well, we're talking test less than 10 millivolts, not even not, not even 5 millivolt difference between them. And that's when you end up having a lovely, a lovely um, output like that. So let's put this into this and we can have a look at this. So this is our 1% here. And our 1% is at um, 60 dB, minus 60 dB down. We have our second harmonic there, which is that, which is that warm sound. And that is at uh, 53, 54 dB down, nice. And our third harmonic there is uh, 73, 72. So you're not gonna hear any of that. You're not really gonna hear this, uh, this 1% here either, at the minus six down. But it goes to show though, doesn't it, that you're gonna, out of these tubes, you get more power it's got less distortion for what you're actually getting from the tube. And um, yeah, the, the, the GE ones do seem to be a lot better than those 6K4s. Oh, let's just adjust this down here. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And there's nothing untowards in there, it seems. That should show these for being bad whatsoever. I think when they talk about these tubes and they say that, uh, which one is it, they're here, only the best tubes are slipped by reverb and they're used as match pairs. That's how I bought these as match pairs. Um, they're military grade, ruggedized military grade because, oh, I forgot to show you. 
maybe when we do another video or I could just swap them out but what you'll find is um, do a little test so if you look at the FFT down here what you're going to look for is uh, noise and you can see the blue line going up across the frequency there that's on the right hand side channel you see the orange line going up a bit and then on the left hand side channel the blue going up a bit and that's just with little tiny taps off this and that's one way of like having a little look and seeing how these tubes are, are doing for noise like that now let me just uh guess we're going to leave it like that actually we're going to put a stop on that we're going to turn this all the way off disconnect this and i'm sorry to go through this again by putting these the other way around but i'm going to swap these back out again because um I'll show you what the noise is coming off the other ones. It's going to be hot. <sighs> hot, hot, hot. I did actually make myself a couple of little things for pulling these out. Ooh, so I don't burn my fingers. Uh, there we go. Let's pop these back in. This is the last bit of this. We'll have to do a sound on a, on a different one. I suppose I can always skip through these bits and just get a bit of a sound check in. Okay, so let's get that in nicely. Once again, re-power up. Oop, turn that around. And again, you're going to see that when I turn this on, it's up to 12 watts when we first kick in there. And then we settle down at 5.7, a little bit higher, 6.7. 6.7 now let's just get straight on with it on here and we can click on run because we have some power going in let's turn this up again so there's our peak now when I do this should be the blue tube you see the difference there and then the yellow tube and you can see how that jumps up and down there. So there is a difference between these ones. And you can hear it in the sound as well. There's a difference between these ones and the other ones. There's not so much movement on the other ones. Uh, where there's a, there is more on here. These use more power. They don't give as much output. They got what I would say is more distortion. Um, especially on that third harmonic. Third harmonic, you can see the differences as well when you look at the, uh, let me just get rid of that for a second. When you look at the FFT, and you can see the difference here between this third harmonic on one channel and then on the blue channel on the left hand side, this has got a lot higher order there on the, um, on that third harmonic there. This is our second harmonic. This is considerably higher now than the um, what we're putting in there, which is at four and a half kilohertz, one uh, percent. And I don't believe you get as well. You don't get as much output anyway. I think we were on twenty one on the output, around about five dB better on the output than on this one. So there's the uh, difference between those tubes. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you got this far, and I'll catch you in the next video, guys.